The first White House of the Confederacy was the executive residence of President Jefferson Davis and family, while the capital of the Confederate States of America was in Montgomery, Alabama. Completely furnished with original period pieces from the 1850s and 1860s, the 1835 Italianate style house is a beautiful old landmark in the downtown area of historic Montgomery, Alabama. It is listed on the National Register of Historic Places and the Alabama Register of Landmarks and Heritage. Today, I have the honor of sharing this incredible house museum with you. Welcome to Southern Heirlooms. I'm Ken Rivenbark. Welcome to Southern Heirlooms with Ken Rivenbark. Welcome back to Southern Heirlooms. I'm Ken Rivenbark. Led by South Carolina on December 20th, 1860, Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, and Texas seceded from the United States of America in rapid succession in the first week of 1861. On February 4th of 1861, the succeeded states met in Alabama State Capitol building to form the Confederate States of America. A few days later, on February 18th, Jefferson Davis of Mississippi was sworn into office as the first president of the Confederacy. A military hero, former Secretary of War, and former U.S. Senator, Davis had been at home near Vicksburg, Mississippi when he received the news of his election by telegraph. As was the style of the day, he reluctantly accepted and journeyed to Montgomery by steamboat and train for his inauguration. Verena Ann Howe Davis, the new First Lady, was a daughter of a former governor of New Jersey and a cousin of Aaron Burr. Accustomed to moving in elaborate social circles, she entered her duties with clear intent to charm both Confederate and foreign leaders with extreme social dignity and hospitality. Before joining her husband in Montgomery, for example, she arranged for a French chef to join the family in the new capital and also acquired an elaborate state carriage and custom-designed French gowns. On February 21st, 1861, the Provisional Confederate States Congress authorized the leasing of a new executive mansion in Montgomery for the new president and his family. The structure, known today as the First White House, was attained for a then stunning sum of $5,000 per year from its latest owner, Colonel Edmund S. Harrison of Prattville. The house was built in 1832 to 1835 by William Sayer. The first White House passed to a string of owners who considered it a fashionable residence. Already 30 years old, it was remodeled into the Italianate architectural style in 1855 by Colonel Joseph Winter. The Italianate style was then popular across the South and gave the renovated home new value and charm. The home then stood near the Alabama River at the intersections of Lee and Bibb Street. It was a prime location as much of the activity of the Confederate government was centered in the area. Throughout the spring of 1861, the first White House of the Confederacy hosted sparkling receptions and events. Numerous writers of the time described the elegance and charm with which Mrs. Davis received guests, and the house became the social center of the South. The house continued to function as the Southern White House until the end of May when the Davis family moved to Richmond, Virginia, which had become the new capital of the Confederacy. More states soon joined the Confederate States of America. The mother state, Virginia, succeeded on April 17, 1861, followed by Arkansas on May 6. On May 20, the same day that North Carolina succeeded, the Provisional Confederate Congress passed a resolution to move the Confederate capital to Richmond, Virginia, and to reconvene there on July 20. Next to the esteemed Mount Vernon Ladies Association of the Union, the Ladies Hermitage Association, and the Confederate Literacy Society in Richmond, the White House Association is one of the oldest historic preservation organizations in the United States, dedicated solely to the preservation of a house museum. The association works in partnership with the state of Alabama and have done a remarkable job of moving the house to its present location, decorating, preserving, and interpreting this historic home 
during the past 115 years. When we return, we will be joined by the current regent, Mrs. Ann Tidmore, and begin touring this incredible house museum. There's nothing like seeing it for yourself. Inline Lighting has an impressive showroom near you, where you can see everything from gorgeous traditional classics to the most contemporary styles. Our certified lighting specialists are educated to help you find the perfect fixture for any space. Love your current lighting but want to save energy? We can help you there too. Inline Lighting, always open at inlinelighting.com. Rivenbark and Roper Antiques began serving customers June 2006 and is regarded as Huntsville's finest antique gallery. The shop represents high quality antiques from the 18th to the early 20th centuries, the largest collection of silver in North Alabama, Chinese and Japanese export porcelains, and original art from around the world. From day one, the business has focused on three principles that have established the essence of Rivenbark and Roper Antiques. They take great pride in providing their clients with the highest quality merchandise at the lowest prices possible, offering hospitality and personal service to build a relationship of trust and to celebrate with customers the joy of bringing beauty, style, and elegance to their homes. Rivenbark and Roper Antiques has gained the reputation of offering a high quality product with extensive personal service. The shop has lived by the strict policy of not selling reproduction furniture and abiding by the original guidelines of not selling furniture newer than 1940. Their strengths are reflected in their dedicated customers. Customers know that when they engage in business with Rivenbark and Roper, they can count on truth, knowledgeable information, and customer dedication. Welcome back to Southern Heirlooms. I'm Ken Rivenbark. I'm joined today by the current regent of the White House Association of the Confederacy, Mrs. Ann Tidwell. Hello. Welcome to the first White House of the Confederacy. Thank you so much. We are so happy to have you today. This is the home that Jefferson Davis and his family lived in in the spring of 1861 when the Confederate government was formed across the street at the Alabama State Capitol. Wow, and, and through the past 115 years, your, your regents have done an incredible job and, and the people of Alabama and across the country oh, in you. bringing back a, the original pieces of the home. Yes, yes. Everything in the house is either original to the house, belonged to the Davis family, or it is of the 1850 to 60 period. I think that's quite amazing. We're standing in the entryway of the first White House of the Confederacy and we're, we're going to be looking at some of the artifacts here beginning with the Great Seal. Can you tell us about that? Yes, thank you. The Great Seal of the Confederacy was uh, adopted by the Confederate government with the uh, understanding that they were doing what their revolutionary forebears had intended by st starting a new nation and George Washington is in the center of the Great Seal of, Alabama, of the uh, Confederacy. He is. And what is the age of this piece? This piece is an original lithograph and it is of the 1870 period. Great. And we're standing next to this beautiful portrait of President Davis and it hangs above this incredible sofa. Let's tell our viewers about the two pieces. Sure. The portrait is a copy of the original which hangs in the Pentagon in Washington because Jefferson Davis was Secretary of War under Franklin Pierce. And who painted this pa portrait? The, the portrait was painted by Louise Schaefer Cohn and she was a, a Birmingham artist and it was done in 1970. It's incredible. It really is. The sofa, the sofa has is, an incredible story. It has quite a provenance. The sofa was purchased by President Davis and was in his office in the Alabama state capital when he was here in Montgomery. Then when the uh, Confederacy moved to Richmond and the Davises left, President Davis gave this sofa to his personal secretary, uh, Mr. Alexander Clitheroe. It was in his family for many, many years and the Clitheroe family donated it back to the That's first That's incredible. The, the sofa is the uh, 1840 Empire. It's in the French uh, Restoration period. And I want to show our viewers a couple more beautiful pieces here at the entry hall. We're standing next to a fine mahogany pier table. The pier table dates to 1840, 1845 and is believed to be Philadelphia. And the French mirror is exquisite, exquisite. It is French continental and dates to 1860. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. And of course, the vase on the top of the table is one of my favorites, Old Paris. Yes, and we have the matching payoff to the vase in the uh, first Incredible. parlor. Incredible. And speaking of, you gave us a great lead in. Let's go into the first parlor. Fine, let's do. Okay. We're standing in the first parlor, and there are three things of importance I want our viewers to know about. First of all, the portrait behind us of Sarah Knox Taylor. Yes, yes. Sarah Knox Taylor was Jefferson Davis's first wife. She was the daughter of Zachary Taylor, who was, of course, later President of the United States. Yes. And so she was the only person to be married to a president and be the daughter of a president. Well, and unfortunately, they were only married three months when she died of um, malaria. malaria. Mm -hmm. And yes. then he lived on the farm for eight years in seclusion uh, studying law. Yes, that's right. Fascinating. The next piece I want to talk about is this beautiful uh, gasolier. It is original to the home, built yes. in 1835 and gilt bronze, mm -hmm. and it has three figures. Tell me about those. Yes, they're the three muses. They're beautiful. And, and these were originally um, gas, of course, so the gas would have been piped in. From the street, yes. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I want our viewers to know about are these carpets. Um, originally in a home this uh, age, the carpets would be wall to wall. And let's talk about these. Yes, these are Wilton carpets. They are 1850s, and they were on a plantation in Virginia. And they had cut out the uh, in, in, insert here to, uh, m for the fireplaces. And I think it's wonderful that you've been able to invert the rug and use it for a platform area yes. for visitors in, in the museum. The entrance area. Great. And we're in the second parlor, and there's so many incredible things here to see, but uh, there, I picked out a few things I want you to talk about. In the two parlors and the dining room are these beautiful cornices. Mm -hmm. yes. Can you tell our viewers, yes. viewers about them? We think that the, Mrs. Davis brought the cornices to Montgomery when she came to live here when President Davis w was uh, president. Interesting. Mm -hmm. so, so they're at least from the 1860s, maybe earlier. Oh, yes, that's right. They're beautiful, and they are uh, tooled uh, brass. Yes, that's right. They're incredible. And two of my favorite items in this room uh, is President Davis's chair and the family Bible. Can you tell us about them? Yes. Now, the chair was a chair that Mrs. Davis, after two years of imprisonment, uh, she was able to send him this chair to sit on. Until then, he had to sit on a hard wooden bench. So he used this in his cell? Yes. And the uh, Bible was a uh, of the family Bible at Bryfield, their plantation home in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. When the Federals ransacked uh, Bryfield, they, one of the officers stole the Bible, or we call it liberated. Right. And he kept it until l much later when his brother gave it back to us. Amazing. It was. Stay with us. When we return, you can see more incredible items here at the first White House of the Confederacy in Montgomery, Alabama. Established in 1978, Randy Roper Interiors is the premier interior design firm for residential and commercial projects. The goal at Randy Roper Interiors is to work with each client to create a beautiful, warm, and comfortable space that reflects your individual tastes. Randy Roper Interiors offers one of the largest resource design libraries in Alabama and is located at 311 North Jefferson Street in downtown Huntsville. Randy Roper Interiors, where experience matters. Peace Loving Animals is an animal rescue facility located in Tanner, Alabama, where we educate the community on the humane treatment of animals, caring for abandoned strays, and finding homes for unwanted yet lovable pets. You could be the voice for an abandoned animal by supporting Peace Loving Animals today. This advertisement is proudly sponsored by Keystone Laboratories of Decatur, Alabama, helping protect the public health and environment through quality testing. Welcome back to Southern Heirlooms. I'm Ken Rivenbar. I'm joined today by uh, Regent Ann Tidmore of the first White House of the Confederacy. We're standing in the beautiful dining room, and the first thing you notice are these two beautiful mirrors, and they're reflecting the beautiful Baccarat crystal chandelier. But, Ann, there's something wonderful in this room I want yes. to point out, and that's this wonderful Silver oh, water cooler. Silver water cooler, yes. yes. Tell us about it. This is one of the most unique pieces in the house. This water cooler was given to Captain Jesse Cox, who was a steamboat captain on the Alabama River in 19, I mean, 1858. Wow. And uh, by the people of Montgomery, Alabama. And it has his name, a cartouche with his name, and, and given to the people. Given by the people. So. Now, there's an interesting story of how this. Um, 
was saved. Tell us yes. about this. When, uh, when General Wilson, the federal uh, cavalry officer, came to Montgomery and uh, they called him Wilson's Raiders, the people of Montgomery were, felt they were in great peril and this piece was buried, supposedly, mm -hmm. to keep the Wilson's Raiders from stealing it. Wow, that's incredible. And in addition to the room um, presenting some of Mrs. Davis's original sterling, some pieces from her coffee service, there's a porcelain tea service that was hers. Tell yes. us about that. That is called the Moss Rose China, and that was her pattern, and she brought it with her when she came from Bryfield. It's beautiful. We're going to move into the rear parlor next and look at some more incredible pieces of furniture. Yes, let's do. Great. We moved into the rear parlor of the first White House of the uh, Confederacy, and we're standing in front of this incredible painting, and it's powerful. Yes, yes. Tell us about it. It's representative of the mourning that the women of the South went through uh, in the post-bellum period. It shows the, the woman, is, of course, in her mourning dress, she has the ladder, the gun, and the uniform. Yeah. Very, as I said, very powerful. And this sofa is incredible, and it is believed to be from the original Cap original Alabama State Capitol, and it's just a monumental proportions. Okay, we mentioned earlier that the house was built by William Sayer. Yes, um, he was relative of uh, Zelda Sayer Fitzgerald, wife of F. Scott Fitzgerald. Right. And their daughter, Scotty, donated some furniture to the home. Tell us about yes. it. Yes. Scotty was a friend of our, uh, my predecessor. And she gave us these two beautiful uh, lady and gentleman's chairs and the wonderful secretary desk bookcase that belonged to the Manchin family in, Louisiana, in uh, uh, Kentucky. Wonderful. We're standing in the bedroom of President Jefferson Davis, and I feel like we're standing on sacred ground. Everything in this room is a personal relic or artifact of President Davis. Let's tell our viewers about some of the items. Yes. Uh, the photograph above us. The photograph was the last one taken of Jefferson Davis before his death in 1889. And what about this bed? The bed was his. It was made to order for him. He was an extra tall man, and so the bed was extra tall and extra wide. Well, and it's called a spindle bed? Yes, a spool, a spool spindle bed. bed. Uh -huh. okay. And has the canopy over it. Okay. And what about the display case? The display case has all the, uh, of his personal items, uh, suspenders, the valise, the uh, collar box, the slippers. Wow. And there's even one of his shirts on the bed. Yes. Now, how did the House Museum come to uh, acquire get these artists, acquire these? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Davis w was a good friend of our first regent, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Carrie Phelan Beale. And after President Davis's death, Mrs. Davis gave everything in this room and a number of other things we'll look at later upstairs to, uh, to our regent. And just to remind our viewers, uh, the House Association began in, in 1900. Uh, Mrs. Davis died in 1906, so these artifacts have been in the possession yes. of, of the home for quite a while. Quite a while. And Mrs. Davis even drew a diagram of exactly how she wanted everything in this room placed. And that's amazing. And you have that diagram. Yes, we do. We do. Great. Let's move into Mrs. Davis's bedroom. Yes, please. Let's okay, go. please. <laughs> we're now in Mrs. Davis's bedroom, and we're standing in front of this beautiful bed. And although it was not hers, it is period, and it has an interesting story. Yes. Let's yes. talk about that. Yes, this bed was made in Massachusetts, and it was supposed to have been slept in by General Lafayette when he came to America. That's incredible. Behind us in the corner is a piece that was Mrs. Davis. It's a um, empire mahogany piece. It's actually her wig stand. Yes, and it has w her wigs in it. Amazing. Another, I think one of my favorite pieces of furniture in the house is this wonderful wardrobe. Let's tell our viewers about that. Yes, this wardrobe was made by slaves on the plantation at Briarfield. Uh, and dates, what, 1840, yes. 1845? Yes, yes, quite old. Mm -hmm. And it, it's got a primitive look, but it's a beautiful bonnet top. It's incredible. Now, say the best for last, this beautiful portrait of Mrs. Davis. Yes. Uh, we got that from Sotheby's in New York when it came for sale. And it, she was 19 when it was painted before she married. And it's money well spent. She's, she's just exquisite. When we return, we can move upstairs and, and tour one of the bedrooms. There is so much to see here. We cannot show you everything, but you've got to come visit the first White House of the Confederacy in Montgomery, Alabama. Stay with us. We'll be right back. To say you've worked too hard to let this economy jeopardize your future would be an understatement. While you don't have control over today's markets, you do have control over how well prepared you are for the future. That's where the Keen Group at UBS Financial Services Incorporated in Huntsville can help. 
Wealth Management Advisors Penny and Tom Keen will create a plan that can help you weather the uncertain markets while keeping you on track. Call or visit our website, The King Group, at UBS Financial Services Incorporated in Huntsville. Member FINRA SIPC. The following advertisement is proudly sponsored by Moss Lumber Company of Gurley, Alabama. A new leash on life helps thousands of homeless animals each year find a forever home. Our main purpose is to end the euthanasia of wonderful, adoptable pets in our community. Your support is greatly needed to carry out our mission. Opportunities are available to volunteer in the facility, foster a loving animal, donate to meet the financial needs of these animals, and shop in our Marketplace thrift store. Visit us today. A new leash on life needs you. Come visit the Little Green Store on Montesino Mountain. The Little Green Store carries art, ceramics, jewelry, and gift items representing the work of over 100 artists and artisans. Every piece is American made, and most of the art showcases the creative pulse and energy of Huntsville and North Alabama. Engage with your community and give local artists a voice when you purchase local, high quality, and environmentally friendly art and design. The friendly staff at the Little Green Store is eager to assist you in finding special and unique gifts for every occasion. The Little Green Store on Montesino Mountain. Welcome back to Southern Heirlooms. I'm Ken Rivenbart. I'm joined again by Mrs. Ann Tidmore. We're upstairs at the first White House of the Confederacy and we're standing outside of the nursery. Yes. Um, Ann, let's tell our viewers what's here. Oh, we love our nursery. There's a baby bed that was given to the Davises when the, for, the baby, for the children. And this is the canopy bed? Yes, yes. Beautiful. Right. And what about the clothing? The clothing, yes, is all Davis children's clothing. And it, it's Amazing beautiful. stitch work. It's, mm -hmm. it's really beautiful. And in addition, there's a 1820 cradle in the yes, floor. Yes. It's just sweet. Um, let's move into one other room that I think our viewers are going to find most fascinating. Yes. Shall we? Please. Thank you. And we're standing in another bedroom, and this is so unique. You've got to tell our viewers about how um, these pieces were acquired. Yes, thank you. These are Mrs. Davis's New York bedroom pieces. And after D President Davis died, Mrs. Davis and her youngest daughter, Winnie, who was unmarried, moved to New York City, where, she, where Mrs. Davis worked for Pulitzer. Mm -hmm. And they lived in a series of hotels, and she was within uh, the Majestic Hotel in New York, uh, with this furniture when she passed away. Okay, so this, this is the actual bed that Mrs. Davis passed away in. Um, the wicker set in front of us. Yes. They yes. had tea. Yes, uh, this is her uh, china. Yes. It's amazing. And the interesting little piece of furniture in the room, it looks like a chest, but it's actually a pull-out bed. Yes. Now, was this yes. in the hotel also? Yes, it was. And Winnie, the youngest daughter, would sleep on it. Amazing. One last thing you've got to tell us about this is this exquisite quilt. Yes, the gun, we call this the gunboat quilt because the women of Alabama made these quilts to sell, to raise money for a gunboat for Mobile Harbor wow. during the war. Yeah. So this one is, uh, it's, it was made before 1862 and it, uh, was raffled at least three times. What people would do, they would raffle them off to raise the money, and then the person that bought it was supposed to present it again so that it could be raffled over and to over. keep it going. Yes. Wow, yes. that's amazing. And it was finally bought by Reverend Hutchinson in Summerfield, Alabama, and his granddaughter donated it to us much later. Wow, it is exquisite. It is exquisite. The first White House of the Confederacy is full of life today and allows each of us to relive an amazing chapter of our American history. The collection of heirlooms of the Jefferson Davis family and the historical relevance of this home is a result of the passionate work the White House Association has amassed for over 115 years. On behalf of the association, I wish to offer my thanks to the thousands of people who have donated items back to the first White House of the Confederacy, as well as financially assisting its cause. The House Museum is a living history book and one I hope you will visit soon. With a heart full of gratitude, I'm Ken Rivenbart with Regent Ann Tidmore. The first White House of the Confederacy was the executive residence of President Jefferson Davis and family, while the capital of the Confederate States of America was in Montgomery, Alabama. Completely furnished with original period pieces from the 1850s and 1860s, 
1835 Italianate House is a beautiful old landmark in the downtown area of historic Montgomery, Alabama. The White House Association, established in 1900, has amassed one of the most comprehensive collections of artifacts of the Davis family and is one of the jewels of Montgomery, Alabama. The purpose of Southern Heirlooms with Ken Rivenbart is to touch and embrace lives through the celebration of family histories. Please visit our website, southernheirloomstv.com, to learn more about today's show, read our recent blogs, sign up for our e-newsletter, as well as find contact information for speaking engagements. Southern Heirlooms with Ken Rivenbart greatly appreciates your support. Thank you. Riven Bark and Roper Antiques began serving customers June 2006 and is regarded as Huntsville's finest antique gallery. The shop represents high quality antiques from the 18th to the early 20th centuries, the largest collection of silver in North Alabama, Chinese and Japanese export porcelains, and original art from around the world. From day one, the business has focused on three principles that have established the essence of Riven Bark and Roper Antiques. They take great pride in providing their clients with the highest quality merchandise at the lowest prices possible, offering hospitality and personal service to build a relationship of trust and to celebrate with customers the joy of bringing beauty, style, and elegance to their homes. Rivenbark and Roper Antiques has gained the reputation of offering a high quality product with extensive personal service. The shop has lived by the strict policy of not selling reproduction furniture and abiding by the original guidelines of not selling furniture newer than 1940. Their strengths are reflected in their dedicated customers. Customers know that when they engage in business with Riven Bark and Roper, they can count on truth, knowledgeable information, and customer dedication. Friends of the Alabama Governor's Mansion is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that works to promote and preserve the historic Alabama Governor's Mansion complex located on South Perry Street in downtown Montgomery's Garden District. Today, in cooperation with the Office of the First Lady of Alabama and the Governor's Mansion Authority, the Friends of the Alabama Governor's Mansion continues to protect the historical character of the Governor's Mansion as a symbol of Alabama pride and heritage, as well as an appropriate setting for carrying out official and ceremonial functions for the state. As a nonprofit arm of the mansion, the Friends of the Governor's Mansion Board of Directors work to raise funds and awareness for mansion projects and initiatives. For more information on how you can volunteer, become a member, or support the organization, go to alabamagovernorsmansion.org. Be a part of our state history today.